Welcome to Adventures in Messaging. I'm Emma Stratton, and today I'm super excited to be joined by Kristen Ribeiro, Head of Brand and Corporate Marketing at Handshake. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you, Emma. Thanks for having me. Super glad to be here. It's great to have you. So I know you're super busy at Handshake, uh, heading up brand and corporate. You handle all sorts of things, but I hear you're even busier these days because you are a new mom. Yes, I am. I am a mom to a nine-month-old baby girl named June. Uh, so she keeps cute. me on my toes, probably more so than than everything at work. But it's been very fun learning learning her, learning me as a mom um, in this crazy chaotic year. Yeah, I bet it's really something working full time, uh, having a new baby, and and all the things. So you've made it. Yes. <laughs> I made it nine months. <laughs> well, you're a strong woman. I love it. And not only are you a strong woman, you have strong beliefs about messaging. So I'd love to know what is uh, your controversial uh, statement about messaging? Yeah. So um, all of my product marketing uh, peers and friends are probably not going to love this, but my controversial belief is that uh, product marketing does not own messaging. I really think that, uh, I think corporate marketing owns messaging. I think sales owns messaging. I think demand gen owns messaging. I think customer success and account management do as well. Um, and ultimately I think our executives own messaging as well. So it's, it's not just something that lives in the PMM world. Of course they are the shepherd and they help drive the process along, but I really, really think um, all of those groups have to be bought in, have to feel like they own it and are a part of it in order to, um, you know, live and sell it. I think that's such an important point that you make because messaging is useless if it just sits on some framework, Google Doc in a <laughs> dusty old corner and no one's actually using it. it. It doesn't really matter. So you're talking about everyone owns it because they have, um, they got to bring it to life in their own way, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, so maybe not so controversial when you really, <laughs> when you talk about it, yeah. but at first blush, it does seem a bit different. So tell me then with your experience, what have you come to believe to be uh, some of the secrets to great messaging? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as a product marketer and someone who's, who's kind of gone through the pragmatic marketing training, there's a ton of um, very textbook things that I could say, you know, there's the frameworks that they provide. You wanna have your, your um, pillars and have your product uh, proof points ladder up to those. But I think ultimately for me, the secret to great messaging is keeping it real and simple, right? So, you know, what can you say about your product, your service, your solution, your company that would make sense to your mom or your aunt or, your grandma, maybe your grandma, that might be a stretch. Um, depends on the grandma. <laughs> yeah, depends on the grandma. Probably mine would not understand, but um, so yeah, I think first of all is just keeping it very uh, direct and simple. All of those ancillary words that I know we all love to use at times, um, I'd say just like check yourselves on, on how frequently you use those. The other couple of things for me, number one are customers. Um, I, I love talking to customers. I love understanding, you know, what they're doing in their work lives and personal lives. I think that's one of the, the things that I've carried um, in my career as a product marketer and beyond is just the relationship that I have with, with um, customers. So I think being able to talk to them and understand, you know, what are the words that they use to describe the pain points they're having, what are the words that they use to describe the the solution, whether it's, you know, homegrown or some other thing um, and really like get in touch with how they describe things. Secondly, I would say, you know, very intimate knowledge of the product. Um, a lot of times I think we all, you know, can come into new companies and and think, hey, I've done this before. Like I know the space. Uh, I'm going to just create, create a messaging framework and that'll be my quick win, right? Um, but that's, you know, not always easy when you don't know the product. Um, so spend time in the product, spend time with your product team. Um, and then the last bit is, you know, pay attention to what your competitors are saying, but don't pay too much attention. You don't want to over rotate on every single thing you're seeing them put out. Uh, you want to make sure you're uniquely differentiated. 
And then I feel like you can kind of close the book on that and revisit it when you need to, um, but not, not necessarily harp on it. Yeah, I think those are really good points. Definitely things that I come across companies just uh, really obsessed with what competitors are saying certain words like, oh, we can't say growth because they say growth. Mm -hmm. And there's only so many words in the dictionary and Mm -hmm. you don't want them to really define your strategy, um, especially when people can just copy and paste headlines back and forth. I mean, I've seen those, those headline wars. Um, (laughs) (laughs) They don't really take you anywhere. Right. Um, Yeah. So one question, just speaking about um, ancillary words, you mentioned some of these ancillary words that we kind of, that creep into our messaging when they really don't need to be there. I wondered if there were any words or phrases that you commonly hear in product marketing space and the tech space that you think just needs to be banished. uh, Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, two immediately come to mind. Um, I'm sure there's a list of others, but optimize and streamline are, Ah! are are the two that I feel like we have banged those into all of our heads far too much. <laughs> and it is very much a, a cut and copy and paste from whatever company to whatever company. You'll see those everywhere. And I would be very happy uh, to not see those two words in all product messaging. No, I totally agree. Optimize and streamline are just, they are everywhere. It's, it's pretty hard to, hard to escape it for sure. So tell me, Kristen, I'd love to know if you could hop in a time machine, go back in time to when you started out in your marketing career, what advice would you give your younger self? Yes, I love this question. Um, If only I had that foresight (laughs) at that young age. Um, A couple of things. I think the first thing I would tell myself is focus in one area. Specifically, you know, I started out in product marketing, um, but I started out pretty broad. So I owned product marketing or did product marketing and then dabbled in a lot of different other things. And um, I think I didn't actually realize that you could specialize in certain areas of product marketing until many years later. Um, So I would tell myself, try and focus in one area. Um, For me, that later became sales enablement. And I deeply embedded myself in with the sales team, understanding, you know, everything around an enterprise sales motion. Um, But I think having that depth then allows you to come up and actually have a breath versus just going broad throughout your whole career. Um, I think the second thing I would say to myself is focus on your strengths and do not focus on what you believe or others tell you are your weaknesses. Um, I had a manager early on in my career who, as we were going through a feedback review session, she kind of like laid out, here are your strengths, here are your weaknesses. And I was thinking, oh, she's going to tell me. And one of those weaknesses was like my analytical skill set. And so I was thinking, she's going to tell me I need to go like spend time in Excel or whatever it is. And uh, she said, you know what? Don't worry about those. You're really good at building relationships. You're really good at telling stories. Just focus your time here. And I think that was a great piece of advice. And you know, saved me a lot of angst and, and uh, time working, not working on those weaknesses that um, ultimately like didn't serve me to be the best employee and product marketer I could be. That is, that's really awesome. What an inspired meeting, because I think when, even the word weakness makes you think I need to fix this and make it stronger mm-hmm. when really it's like, it's helping you out by saying, here are the things that you can feel free to avoid because they're not for you. And and here are the things, the strengths that you're really good at. So just focus on this area. So I think that's really cool, but it must've been a bit terrifying to see someone laying out. Yeah, it wasn't the, it wasn't the most, um, I guess, standard feedback review framework that I've seen, but it, you know, it ultimately helped me. (laughs) How old were you when that happened? I think I was around 24, 25, maybe. 
Yeah. I mean, that's pretty brutal. I could at first, right. Cause yeah. you just want to do a good job and you just yeah. want to be seen as, as all strengths, but yeah. yeah. Well, is there any advice that you would give to other products marketers out there who are, you know, going along in their careers, um, building up, you know, what, what, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think um, one of the things, I guess it depends on, you know, what size company product marketers are at. But one of the things that I found is that oftentimes product marketing was a small function. And so it wasn't easy to learn, understand, develop because there just weren't other product marketers around. So I think, you know, reach out to your network or try and get in touch with other people through um, others' networks. Communities like Sharebird are great. Um, really, really just tap into other people's brains, try and learn as much as you can just from, you know, talking to others and gaining as much insight into their experiences to kind of help you build your perspective out if you don't have that available. Absolutely. Yeah. And Sharebird is a great resource for that. Um, they're all about sharing a peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and getting mentoring opportunities out there. Um, for all the PMs. So exactly. yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for that advice. I think it's really, really helpful. Definitely happy to share.